who, who prepares your house for storm? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> you know, every time a storm comes up, I got to board up a day early because... Uh, I guess it's a good thing you know. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm on the weather information. And there's some, uh, actually some cute stories that go with that. I can tell you Hurricane Gilbert back in 1989, I'm in an Eckerd store and I'm buying batteries and I'm buying flashlights. And people see me buying batteries and flashlights and don't you know that counter was cleared out with the people that were just standing in line behind me. Uh, for Hurricane uh, Lily, I went out and went to go buy lumber. Uh, first time I decided, okay, I'm ordering up the house. We have, Isidore was promising to be possibly a four. And I knew we were going to have uh, uh, Lily right behind it. So it's like, I better go measure. And I went to Lowe's and got all my 14 boards to match up with my windows. And the guy that was cutting wood at Lowe's made a few phone calls. And all of a sudden, it was the, when the Saints were losing to Cleveland. It was one of those classic games where they were blowing the lead again. And it's like, oh, this is a good time to go to Lowe's at halftime before anybody else is thinking about it. <laughs> I went and got my wood, but uh, next thing I know, it, I got about 50 emails in my inbox. Hey, heard you were at Lowe's buying lumber. What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Well, I guess now, in this age of social media, you're totally screwed. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, <laughs> the, Twitter yeah. and tweeting. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, Gustav and Ike, I have a circle of parser going down my cul-de-sac to see if I board it up. <laughs> Gustav, I boarded up again, and I, I swore after Lily, or no, it was after uh, Rita, I was never boarding again because it's a lot of work. I'm working 12, 14 hour days. I got about a three or four hour window to sleep, eat, and board up, and then I got people coming over the houses and boarding up. So it's, it's tough. I'm not boarding again. I, I will let God have it his way with my house from here on out. Speaking of those fancy shutters, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, you go out and price hurricane-proof shutters, and it's an expensive proposition. I'll pay for the damage afterwards. Uh, and you know, right. <laughs> in, in, in Lafayette, wind is not as big of a threat as it is down in Abbeville, as it is in New Iberia or Morgan City, for sure. Uh, water, flood, you have, you have all nine, uh, everything coming at you. And I don't have many trees in my subdivision, not mature trees. So wind is okay. I got a couple of windows I'd like to protect, but uh, at this point it is, and I know this year I'm not going to have the time for that because with the social networking, uh, with continuous news model, that's what we've moved to on the web. Uh, my job starts as soon as I wake up and I got Twitter on the phone and I'm retweeting information and publishing stuff to the web. It's uh, uh, the, the appetite for information going out now is increased and in the television business we're competing with social media. We're competing with bloggers. We're competing with that different sorts of delivery methods of electronic media from the iPhone to Blackberries to Droids. So, uh, and there's one to be made in that, and if we choose to stay just a TV station or TV radio combo, uh, we're gonna get left back in the dust. So that's a, a big part of what we're doing right now. Cool. Well, I guess I won't be circling your neighborhood next door. So. Uh, no, come on in. I'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Dave, you're, an, you're a native of New Orleans, but you've lived here in Acadiana for a long, long time. Yeah. Let's go there. Right. Let's just stop there. Um, what, I, what I'm curious about though is, I mean, you weathered storms in both New Orleans and Lafayette, mm -hmm. and uh, is, is the preparation different? Well, you know, in living in New Orleans, one of the things that was interesting was Hurricane Betsy hit New Orleans almost exactly like Katrina did. The uh, the big difference was that we had coastal wetlands that were uh, much more. Uh, substantial and robust uh, and I forget the statistic but for every hundred yards of wetland you know you can reduce the storm surge so um, you know those living in in the ninth ward and down in uh, St. Bernard Parish and, and, and those areas uh, they flooded even during Betsy uh, but what was surprising you know was I, I lived in an area off the Legion Fields and Robert E. Lee that um, had a little water during Audrey and a little water during Betsy. And so we were never really um, thinking too much about flooding. Uh, we did evacuate on occasion. We went down to the French Quarter, which actually turns out to be a, a good place Wait, to evacuate. But we didn't know it at the time. We just went to stay at a hotel down in the French Quarter. Um, 
but you know, uh, the, the big difference there was that um, that we, we had a lot more protection and things had not eroded quite as much. Um, that was the hurricane where uh, Mayor Victor Skiro in, in New Orleans uh, stood in front of the uh, civil defense uh, shelter and, and, and made the, uh, the proclamation that um, uh, don't believe any rumors unless they come from me. <laughs> and he had a civil defense hat on him. So uh, he was going to be the generator of rumors if there were going to be any. Uh, he wanted to make sure that everybody knew that. But um, in terms of uh, preparation, New Orleans was a little more vulnerable. We were out by the lakefront. Uh, we, we didn't really board up or do anything, but the time that we did evacuate during Betsy, uh, we, we did have some damage at our house, you know, quite a bit of damage. And um, I remember my dad uh, talking to an insurance adjuster uh, who wanted to get the roof fixed, and um, it's a prime time for opportunists to be coming in. And uh, I just remember he's an emotional Italian like I am, and I saw him slamming the phone book down and saying, show me this man's name in the, in the yellow pages, uh, because we don't want anybody climbing on our roof doing this who just moved into town is going to slap something up. So uh, we were probably a little more vulnerable there. I, I feel, I guess, safer in Lafayette. We seem to be in a, a fairly good spot. But I'll tell you, one of the hurricanes that came through, uh, it was predicted to be uh, very powerful, and then suddenly it, it lost its uh, power. I forget which one it was. Maybe. Yeah, and it was like a one by the, game, by the time it hit. But uh, I went outside just to check it out and see what a one felt like. And I, it's at that point that I promised myself if anything greater than that was going to come, I was going to probably leave because it was very intense, you know. And so, uh, but, uh, you know, the difference between the two is that, that, of course, New Orleans, you know, has its own set of uh, problems, primarily water. And uh, depending on where you are in Lafayette, you really don't have that uh, kind of problem. So no different in preparation. But well, I, I follow Rob. What I do usually is I, I try to find out where he's going, and then I just buy what he buys. Oh, you know? that's, that's uh, clever. And so I think if I were Lowe's or Home Depot, I, I'd say, Rob, look, just come in and buy some stuff. Man, man everybody's going to buy. We need, some, we need to move product here. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Get your batteries, and then they get rock really that people are following him. I think that's just a great marketing tool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think I need to retire from day-to-day -day operations to do yeah. that. Yeah, it's very good marketing guy. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed, and and we have all been born witness to this, is our increased vulnerability to tropical activity, not only in the New Orleans area, but our entire coastline because of the coastal wetlands. Uh, eroding away. And why have they been eroding away? Well, over the last 150 years, we've built a lot of these man-made channels uh, to uh, facilitate uh, commerce, whether it's the petrochemical business or whether it's the shipping business and importing and exporting, but we've changed the dynamics along our coast. We've changed the effluent that comes out of the Mississippi River. We control what comes down the Atchafalaya and because of the way we've changed that, our coastal wetlands have diminished because storm after storm, we continue to lose more and more coastal wetlands. And studies after Hurricane Rita indicated that our coast is 30% more vulnerable to a higher, more intense storm surge. And sure enough, Rita was an acid test comparing that to what, her, what happened during Hurricane Audrey. Audrey arguably probably produced a worse storm surge uh, but Rita had a larger surge but, and, and battered the coast longer so that water could work its way further inland. And that's because of the coastal wetlands loss. And New Orleans is bat battling the same thing south and east of there. And I wish we would draw our maps the way they really look because if you look at a map of the United States, you look at a map of Louisiana, you see the outline. But with this oil spill of late, a lot of people are seeing that high resolution imagery and going, man, people live all the way out there in Venice. And, Look how vulnerable that is. And it's just, you're, you're pretty much on a berm out in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're seeing that. And culturally, um, when I first moved to Lafayette, there were probably a thousand people that lived in Pecan Island. 
and as storm after storm, I, I don't know what the, the current population, but I went down there after Hurricane Ike. After, I went down there after Hurricane Rita, and the devastation was terrible. And, and two years later, I go, three years later, I go back after Hurricane Ike, it's the same thing. And I interviewed somebody down there, and he said, well, the, the population right now on Pecan Island is 34 before Hurricane Ike. So what's there now? I don't know. There's, I mean, plenty of people have camps down there, but not many people, uh, just a handful of people are living there. We're seeing that during our lifetime. We see uh, after post-Rita, post-Katrina, we've seen a population shift on where people choose to live. Instead of living down in Henry or Esther, people are moving into Abbeville, they're moving into Lafayette. We saw the, the population bump after Katrina in Lafayette, which is pretty much staying with us. Uh, so it's, it's interesting geopolitically watching how we react to the storms and culturally. But one of the things, and Dave will probably back me up on this, is that uh, you know we do this hurricane special each and every year. It's like, why do a hurricane special? Everybody's lived it over the last five years. They know what's going on. I think people are pretty uh, savvy now when it comes to tropical systems. And any, everybody I talk to say, if it's bigger than a one, I'm leaving. And the problem I'm faced with is uh, 24 hours before a storm makes landfall, we are averaging one category off in intensity forecasting. So we go to bed thinking we got a two tomorrow morning. It could be a three, it could be a one. Oh, that's good to know, thanks. Uh, I mean, and that's, the, yeah, that's the state of intensity forecasting at this point. So uh, it keeps the job interesting, but uh, one of these days, uh, like we had Hurricane Lily, which was a four off the coast, and within six hours it was down to a two or less. One of these nights we're going to go to sleep with a one offshore, and the next morning we're going to wake up and it's a three. Uh, and anything more than a category one, it is a mess. It's messy in a category one. I don't want to venture to guess what 100 mile an hour sustained winds in a two or a three would do in Lafayette. Now you mentioned the oil spill, and I have a very good friend who put it out there, and, 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 and I don't know how candid she really was, but she wanted to know if a hurricane were to develop in the Gulf of Mexico and stir up the waters where the oil spill is, would we be having tar balls in Lafayette? Uh, well, wherever that storm surge goes, there's, go there's going to be oily effluent deposit. There's no doubt about it. Um, the, the big questions I've been getting, will the oil affect the storm? No, it's the other way around. The storm will affect the oil. It could, it could act as an excellent dispersant uh, because the oil loses its toxicity, it evaporates, uh, waves would break it up, rainfall, would, fresh rainfall would be good for it. But wherever that storm surge goes, it's going to be a nightmare situation. We haven't openly discussed it and laughed yet because a lot of it is conjecture. Each storm is going to do something differently. But you take a storm like Rita and put that in the Gulf of Mexico, not only areas that had storm water surge penetration last time around, and it's going to go a little bit farther this time. And instead of having salt water intrusion on the areas that you farm for rice or crawfish or, or graze cattle, you're not going to be able to do any of that because the more than likely the toxicity level in that earth is going to change. But I, I don't know. Bottom line is they got to shut that thing off and then we can deal with dispersing it afterwards. But if it's not shut off, you're still going to have that problem throughout the summer. And one, I mean, as a scientist, we got a great experiment coming up this summer, maybe several. But uh, you know, looking at it socially and what it's going to mean, not only to the, the people that shrimp, the people that farm, and, and even the people that are in the petrochemical business, uh, it's going to be uncharted territories. All right. OK, I think we're going to go ahead and show the video now, turn it over to more personal stories, and then we'll open it up for you guys to ask questions. So this one, did you want to hold this one up? This is a high-tech audio situation. We're holding it up to the laptop. <laughs> so we uh, cutting-edge type uh, type stuff. 